Hey guys, welcome back to the Gaither Gang. Thanks for stopping by. Today's video is about self-care for moms. One of the most asked questions in my homeschooling Facebook groups um, is what do you do for yourself? How do you spend time um, renewing, filling up your, filling up your energy cup, um, filling up your cup for yourself so that you can have um, more to give to your family um, because it is so easy for us to run ourselves ragged and then we have nothing else to give. So I hope this video encourages some of you and um, let's go. Okay, so self-care for busy moms. I'm trying to get better about finding things that can help me um, have time to myself, help me recharge so I can be better to my family um, as homeschool moms. Um, and this video isn't just for homeschool moms. I'm homeschool mom, so I'm going to talk about my situation more. But moms in general, guys, um, we find it hard to find time to um, do things that we love, to um, focus on our needs. Um, and we do have needs, and we need to focus on those, and we need to figure out how to encourage the people around us to see those needs and to listen to us when we say, hey, I need a break, hey, I need to leave the house. Um, and so these are just my tips. There are plenty more tips out there, I'm sure, um, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get better at this too. But uh, let's just dive right in. My first tip is to limit your caffeine and don't shoot me over this one. I love coffee and I could just drink it all day but when I do um, I get um, I can get overwhelmed so much easier and I can get stressed out and um, it's like too much sensory input after a certain point. I've noticed I didn't I didn't used to see that connection but now I can definitely see the connection between um, drinking coffee too far into the day if I start in the morning and then like my nerves are short um, and I can get short tempered with the kids and um, and things like that and noises will be way too loud and I have to get everything quiet in the house so what I've started doing is um, I will have coffee until 10 o'clock in the morning and that's usually like two cups maybe um, two maybe three cups uh, which is still plenty <laughs> we don't need any more than that um, and so at 10 o'clock I switch over to a decaf herbal tea that is thick and rich um, so I kind of still feel like I'm getting that thick rich drink um, but I am not still putting caffeine into my body. Um, this is the one I really like. And um, it is dandelion root. Um, it just has a real strong, bold flavor. Um, like coffee, it does not taste like coffee, but it has a strong, bold flavor um, for coffee lovers. Uh, most coffee lovers, I think, would like that one. Um, and that's what I switch over to. Uh, for one, Obviously, it's decaf, um, and for two, that one's good for your hormones, which is one of my other tips in this video, um, regulate, regulating your hormones um, and focusing on uh, hormone health. Well, let's just go ahead and talk about that one then. Um, so, another tip then is to focus on your hormones um, and getting those under control. I think that sometimes our hormones can get out of whack and we don't even know that that's what the problem is. Um, so um, some things that I have started doing, um, there is a bath that you can do for yourself. Um, if you do it for 20 minutes, at least 20 minutes, you can stay in there longer um, and at least once a week. Um, so once a week for 20 minutes, make sure you are getting in soaking in um, this bath and it really does help your hormones I promise I've done it um, and I can tell a difference and what it is is half a cup of baking soda 10 drops of lavender essential oil and a big old handful of Epsom salt Epsom salts 
Um, put that in your bath. Get it as hot as you want. Um, I like a really super hot bath. It helps relax me. Um, and soak in there for 20 minutes once a week. And that, that will help regulate your hormones. Um, also, what I do is um, I... I love tea, I love hot tea, so I try and drink some um, good herbal teas that are really good for your hormones, that are good for balancing your hormones. Um, I have this one, this is one of my favorites. It's um, Organic Healthy Cycle from Traditional Medicinals, and um, it has red raspberry leaf in it, so if you wanted to just get red raspberry leaf tea, you could do that. I think I have some of that in the cabinet too, um, but this one has lots of other good things for your hormones. And um, especially the two weeks leading up to your monthly, um, then those are the those. That's the best time to drink this one, um, to drink the red raspberry leaf, because um, I really don't know why I'm not that scientific. But um, in my experience, all the things that I read that got me to that point of trying that, and then my experience with it, um, it really does help. Uh, and I can tell when I forgot to drink that tea leading up to that time, um, I can really tell uh, the difference. And so um, that that one, that healthy cycle tea, the dandelion root tea, that's good for your hormones. Uh, red raspberry leaf that I mentioned, lemon balm, I have some of that in the cabinet. Um, you can look up, you can do your own research and find the teas that you think you would like better, but there's a good handful, maybe 10 teas that are really good for your, for regulating your hormones. Um, so that's an easy way. What I do, like I said with the dandelion root, I drink in the morning and then eventually I switch over to water um, and some other cold tea um, decaf. And um, But at, in the evening, when I sit down with my husband in the evening after the kids have gone to bed, I drink one or two, um, maybe sometimes three cups of um, an herbal hot tea and that's how I that's how I find the time to get that into my system the other hormone um, thing that I have started trying to do I haven't been awesome at it but I do I can tell the difference when I am doing a much better job at it um, if you have not heard of seed cycling um, it is where you eat certain seeds at certain times of the month um, to help regulate your hormones and that might sound crazy but there's actually scientific facts that have um, led research to this but um, so for two weeks out of the month you eat flax seed and pumpkin seed and it's like one or two tablespoons per day it's not that much um, so you can throw it in a smoothie or you can just eat the seeds if you like it um, especially the pumpkin seeds and the um, the, the uh, sunflower seeds on the next two weeks. Um, I just I just eat those. So seed cycling, um, the first two weeks is flax seed and pumpkin seed, and then the second two weeks is sunflower seed and sesame seeds. I'll show you a diagram that kind of explains. Um, I'll try and find a link to put in the descriptions of where you can actually go learn about that if you're not familiar. But that really does help with your hormones too. Okay, and so my next tip is um, to be active in nature. Um, so it's sometimes crazy for, for us busy moms. We just we have so much going on that we forget to go out and breathe in some fresh air. Um, and I know that uh, that's not always easy and that might sound super simple, but um, if you can just go out and get some fresh air, even if you, you, know, you, you can't get away from your kids, just take them outside and you go outside too. And just be out there in that fresh air and it really is like a good reset. Um, it just works. <laughs> um, and so, that's my tip number five. Tip number six. And now I'm going to go into a few things that um, to do alone. So some of these tips you'll need somebody, um, your husband um, on the weekend maybe. Um, he can give you time for these things. Um, or um, maybe you have a mother or mother-in-law close that can just come over and watch your kids for an hour or two. Um, 
And if you don't, maybe you can figure out, if you don't have a person like that, maybe you can figure out another way to get these things done. Um, but we're going to go into these tips of um, doing things alone so you don't have that constant input coming at you so you can just be alone. Um, so tip number six is lock yourself in your bedroom. Um, you don't have to leave the house for this one, but my husband um, will give me time on Sundays. He gives me time to plan for the next week. Um, and so he makes sure that he's present with the kids and I can lock myself in the bedroom and um, do what I need to do in there. And that can take an hour, it can take three hours, whatever, but he knows, okay, she needs some time and that's how we've set it up on Sundays. But also he's really good about um, if I text him and I say, when do you have time in your schedule? I really need a break. Then he will try and find some time um, sometimes it's two days later, <laughs> but mo a lot of the times, um, if I say I need a break, then he knows, okay, when I'm available, I need, you know, like it, when he gets off work in the evening, he needs to take care of the kids, figure out what's for dinner, and let me go do whatever I need to do. Um, so hopefully you have somebody like that in your life, but, um, Anyway, I will lock myself in the bedroom sometimes when I say, I need a break. I'll just go in there, guys, and who knows? Um, go in there and crochet. Go in there and um, soak in a bath. Go in there and um, stare at a TV show that you don't get to watch because there are kids always around. Um, go in there and take time for yourself where nobody is talking to you and nobody is touching you and you have room to have your own thoughts. You have room to take a breath. Um, it really helps. Even if it's 30 minutes, um, it's going to help. Uh, so uh, that was tip number six is lock yourself in your room. <laughs> tip number seven is go get out of the house alone. Um, and so go get a coffee or a tea somewhere, go take a walk by yourself, or sit down and read a book alone by yourself with no one around. Um, I have just gone and driven down to the lake and sat in my car and cried. And even though that, that sounds depressing, guys, just being alone and having that space to have your own emotions helps. Um, and so... You, you need to be able to communicate with the people around you. I need time to be alone. So that is really going to help you. Um, tip number eight, sign up for a class. Um, I understand that we are in a pandemic and um, you can't, maybe you can't necessarily get out of the house and go to a class with other people, but there are also um, virtual uh, classes so you could um, have your husband or somebody um, take the kids away for whenever your class is set up if it's set up for every Tuesday at 8 o'clock um, my kids would be in bed so that would be a good time um, or you know if it's every every Monday at 5 o'clock then um, maybe they can go out and have dinner together and you can stay home and do your class and have time alone. Um, but anyway, some, some different ideas for signing up for a class are like sign up for a book club, a quilting class, a cooking class, a dancing class, um, a CrossFit class. And like I said, if, if you have that available to actually go to, go. Go be around other people that can um, just refresh you with their energy. Um, but if you can't do that if there are not safe places to do that and you need to do that virtually. Like I said, you can figure out how to um, take a virtual class and just have something for yourself. You don't have to include your family every single thing you do um, because you need something that is just yours. Uh, so maybe you can think of something that is interesting to you if none of those if you don't want to quilt or crochet or cook or dance or uh, work out or take yoga um, think of something that does sound interesting to you and uh, look into that so tip number nine is going to be um, make the kids take a nap 
or at least if you have a little bit older kids, um, make them take a rest time or quiet time where the rules are um, you have to be quiet. You can sit here and read. You can sit here and use the Kindle. You can, you know, you can watch this show quietly, um, but you cannot bug mom. I have two hours in the day where my youngest three kids, um, they lay down and take a nap, and my oldest two kids have what we call read rest, and um, so they are able to sit there and read. Um, or sometimes I let them play on the Kindle, do learning games on the Kindle, sometimes I let them watch a show, but the rule is you can't talk to me. <laughs> and that might sound rude to some of you guys, but it's not because I have been go, go, going all day long and I need a time to say, okay, I need space to think. I need time to, sp I need space to think about what's for dinner or I don't know guys, it's hard when you have kids that are constantly talking to you, you can't even have your own thoughts. So having a time of the day where you sit everybody down and say, this is our quiet time. Um, guys, even if your kids are 15, they can have a quiet time because all that has to mean is here's what you can do, but you can't bug me. Um, and so set some boundaries because you need that break. You need a mental break in your day um, so that you can keep it going. Uh, so that brings us to our final tip number 10, which is go to church. <laughs> um, guys, even if you're not spiritual, go to church because um, if, you, if you are around other people and you can send your kids to class, um, you can be around other adults and have adult conversation and you can be you. Like I can be Rebecca Gaither instead of Elijah's mom, Jack's mom, Katie's mom, um, I can be me with people. Um, and it really, I know that, that that sounds like you're using church, um, but for one, I am spiritual and I want to go to church because I want to connect with God and I want to connect with um, the body of Christ, the people who are there um, who can encourage me um, and that that is good and wonderful and it's a good break in your week uh, to go and be around those people but like I said if you're not spiritual it's a good place to go um, to be around kind encouraging people and um, also where you know your kids can go to class and um, if you don't have anything else if you don't have anybody else this is a really good tip right here if all those other tips I shared with you, you were thinking, man, that would be nice, but I don't have somebody to help me out. Um, this one, um, you can take your kids to class and you can go be around other adults. So, and I know, like I said, we're in a pandemic. A pandemic. Some churches are closed. Some churches have you spaced um, six feet apart. That's fine, but still go if you're not immunocompromised. Um, if you need to wear your mask and go to church, um, do that because um, being around other people is encouraging and it's a nice, um, a nice break for you. Those are my tips. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope that I encouraged you somehow to, um, to find more time for yourself, to do uh, more things, to take care of yourself. Um, leave this video and go rest in the bath. <laughs> um, so anyway, leave your likes and your comments and tell me what you do to take time for yourself. I'm sure I could learn so much from you guys if you would leave your tips in the comments. Um, like and subscribe to tell me that you liked this video and come back again. I'm posting every week. See you guys.